So a split beach and then there's this dirty glacier in the middle. And then the next beach. So we're counting penguins, and why do we count penguins? Well, penguins are great bioindicators, and they are, they'll tell us what the health of the ocean around Antarctica is, because they eat krill, krill eat phytoplankton, so we can tell indirectly what the productivity of the, of the oceans around here, how it's responding to environmental change. And so we can't really adequately count the phytoplankton. It's really difficult to count the krill. But we can count penguins because they come ashore every year to these same places. We're seeing chin strap declines over the last 50, 30, 50 years. And it's been dramatic. Some of those populations have declined as much as 50%. We've seen chin strap colonies uh, completely vanish. <laughs> Climate's changing more rapidly in the Antarctic Peninsula probably than any place uh, on the planet. And so we're, we're just seeing what the outcome of that is, and that is that it's, it's very likely that when we experience these things in our temperate climates where we all live, we're also going to see, we're going to have, we're also going to have to adapt just as the Adelie penguins, the chinstrap penguins, and the Gentoo penguins are doing right now. So it's a lesson for us because we've, we, we, we either are going to heed this example that we're seeing down here in the Antarctic, or we won't. And we'll suffer the consequences just as, unfortunately, the chinstrap and Adelie penguins seem to be doing down here. They don't have a chance to adapt. I mean, they don't have a chance to control their environment. They're just, they're stuck with whatever we hand them. But we have the, we have the ability to change, and, and we should take serious measures to do so.